All right, welcome to the Cooling and Oiling new member lecture. I'm Connor Devaney, the Cooling and Oiling lead for this season. So first I'm gonna go over some system basics and kind of the rules of the system. And then the system goals and components um, of both oiling and cooling, because um, I'm one of the few leads that has both. Um, so for oiling, we'll start off with um, system basics. We do a dry sump oiling system, which means that we store the oil in an external reservoir um, as seen in the picture on the top. Um, most, most cars and the motorcycle engine that we, we use um, come stock with a, a wet sump. Um, oiling system, which means that the oil is stored in the bottom of the pan, um, as shown by the bottom picture. So we switch to a dry sump because it lowers the center of gravity. Um, it requires more components, but it ends up being more reliable and um, in some cases, um, better performance. So for rules for oiling, um, the rules are stated on the right if you want to read them in more detail, but um, basically the system can't leak. Um, the inlet cannot be in the line of sight of the driver, and it also cannot be um, within the, the tire keep out zone. Um, and that's what this picture shows right here. There's a certain zone where you can't place the reservoir. For the system goals, um, we want to be able to complete competition without damaging the engine, uh, make sure everything's lubricated and, and um, working with the other systems. And then we also want to be able to complete two mock endurances without any um, oil pressure dropouts, and then follow the rules as I listed before. For the components, we have the reservoir, the pan, the scavenge pump, the lines, and the catch can. Um, so I have a diagram that's colored in that picture showing where everything is. And then uh, a uh, picture of the CAD. And now the system basics for cooling. Uh, for cooling, uh, this is kind of a, a diagram of, of the cooling system. Uh, we have an electrically driven pump that pumps the water from the radiator to the engine, then to the oil cooler, and then back to the radiator, which dissipates the heat. Um, and the coolant that we use is water because it's one of the rules for competition. This is the radiator and the radiator duct. Um, the duct was designed by the Aero team last year, and it's gonna be redesigned um, by the Aero this year. Uh, the funnel provides air to the radiator um, without trying to create drag. Uh, and then the radiator itself was a custom made for us by CNR Racing. Um, and the radiator has water flow through it, and then the small fins and tubes dissipate the heat with the water flow. These are the rules and requirements for cooling, put in simple terms. Uh, system cannot leak, and we can only use water. For system goal goals for cooling, um, we want to complete competition without damaging the engine again. Uh, work with other systems, uh, keep the car from overheating, and more specifically, uh, complete a few mock endurance events without overheating. Um, and that, that tends to be around uh, 100 degrees, which I'll get into later. The components for cooling, we have the radiator duct, like I showed, the, then there's a fan, 
attached to that duct, the radiators inside of it. Um, then we have cooling lines going from the engine and then out the engine to the pump. For design, design goals for oiling. Um, we want to not damage the engine, um, which would be from oil pressure dropouts. Uh, this is because um, there's some things like the crankshaft that are suspended by a, a thin layer of oil. Um, and if we have a dropout, then that could damage that. Uh, a dropout is usually when these blue dots are below or um, around the orange. Orange, uh, we, we got from the stock oiling system. So, if we stay above the stock oiling system, then um, we're definitely good. And then we try to reduce weight when possible, as that's one of the main ways we can contribute to the performance of the car. We have a scavenge pump. Um, this is the scavenge pump we chose. Uh, we chose this because it um, provides a flow rate that is more than, or it, we chose it because it's able to keep up with the internal pump. Um, we don't want the internal pump to pump more than the scavenge pump, and then it, it doesn't, we have a dropout that way. For the reservoir, um, the volume is around 3.6 liters. That might change with design. I'm trying to find the minimum oil volume we can without having dropouts. Um, and then there's usually about one liter of oil in the engine, in the lines. Um, and then we have baffles inside of it um, to prevent slosh since it's a circular tank. This is the oil pan. They have two pickup locations. There's a left and a right um, that was found by using a simulation using the accelerometer data. And um, this has not been changed for a couple of years, but I look forward to kind of validating those pickup points. For design goals for cooling, we want to make sure we do not go above 100 degrees Celsius. Um, we kind of want it to plateau. Um, otherwise, things tend to overheat and the pressure becomes too much. For the water pump, we have a Davies Craig water pump. Um, we chose this one because the housing is made out of plastic and there's not many like that. Um, but it also has the, the flow rate that we need. Um, so we also put these fittings on it to connect the hoses and the lines for the cooling. This is the radiator. Um, the, the cooling capacity affected by the water mass flow has heavy diminishing returns. So the radiator is, is uh, the most important component of the cooling as it's the one that is dissipating the heat. For manufacturing these, um, for the reservoir, we uh, water jet the pieces and take all of them together. The pan, we use the CNC and then the lines usually get sponsored. They're customizable length um, AN lines. For cooling, the duct uh, arrow will be doing this via layup with the mold. And then the lines are uh, aluminum tubes with these hoses to connect different components together. Anyone have any questions?
So, like, let's say I want to be on the like, what would what would uh, what do we have to do this year? Like, you said that you wanted to change a few things, but would we be mainly helping with the manufacturing? Like, would we be on design? What would we be our main work? Um, <clears throat> there's not a ton of work to do for cooling and oiling. Um, I'm not changing the cooling side too much, other than aero um, redesigning the duct. Um, what I'm mostly focusing on this year is the reservoir. I'm going to try and reduce the size of it as much as I can. Um, and there's some other small projects that I could I could probably think of and come up with. I have some in mind, but um, mostly would be um, the the manu manufacturing of the reservoir is um, mostly welding. So it's, it's a little difficult for new members to, to do that, but um, I'm, I'm, there's, there's definitely work um, that I could come up with. One idea was um, a catch can. One of the rules we have is to run a catch can and what we use as a catch can right now is, is just a, an aluminum can. Um, so that was a project that we haven't really looked into much, but you kind of design it to um, fit in with the system and be lightweight at the same time. And when would you say your manufacturing and testing really start? Uh, is, are like testing to do with it? Um, like, are you going to validate the oil enough by running the car and see what the oil pressure is? Or like how would you do that? Yeah, um, I'm not completely sure on it, but my idea is to put uh, pressure sensors coming uh, at different points in the lines. Um, and then we would, um, include, including a safety factor, we would gradually de decrease the oil um, before seeing a dropout. Um, the cooling and oiling lead from last year said that that um, from his observations, it looked like we had a lot of extra. So um, it's just kind of one of those things where it's difficult to find the minimum because you don't want to damage anything. But um, there's other ideas to do that too. Like um, one idea that was brought up was trying to make a, a clear reservoir during testing to kind of see where the level is but I'm still kind of looking into things. Once I find that, then that's when I'll design the, the final volume of it and uh, design of it, and then I'll manufacture after probably um, in early spring. So most of the testing would be before that. What do you like um, we haven't changed the oil pan. Um, the lines sometimes change, but that's not really something you manufacture. The, the res is the biggest thing. Uh, I, I remember there was a Michael guy in the garage yesterday who was practicing. And I think when I started practicing, that's because um, I was learning well for a while. Yeah, that would probably be a question. Yeah. yeah I don't, I, um, I think water, not just Connor, Captain Connor, but yeah, I'm not just doing Yeah, yeah, Connor Any other questions? Uh, I think it was uh, as of right now, they're just aluminum. Um, I'm I'm I've had thoughts of, of looking into running like a, a simulation to see um, if there's any better options for baffling, but but the 
that's all I know as of now. As of, as of now. Should be cool if you work on other systems because it seems like you you have not the most amount of work to do. Yeah. But if we helped out just here and there with you and just setting up the lines and stuff like that, yeah, just seeing how it works. This would have to be like I'm an oil guy. Yeah. Something yeah. that we can yeah. Yeah, there's some so there's some people since powertrain has a lot of um kind of I wouldn't say smaller, but um, systems that don't have a ton of work to give out. Some people just kind of jump around powertrain and then um, they, they get whatever really comes. It's kind of what I did um, last year is um, I helped out fueling and I think I did a project for drive tank train once and, and then I started working on cooling and oiling and, and did a lot of work for that. So. And is there a lot of overlap between, like, because you said you, is it just make sure the engine doesn't explode? Or is it like, <laughs> hey, guys, we can provide you with this amount of cooling, like the, the engine team, the 92, the engine truck, yeah. like that, the amount of communication you guys yeah, have? Yeah, kind of. Go ahead like, and hit on. Um, I mean, it kind of, it's not the most flashy system. That's yeah. what I usually say. But, um, it, it's usually just trying to make sure the other systems work and don't fail. Um, so, yeah, it's it's there's um there is oiling that it is involved with with like engine stuff and and uh, there's definitely involvement in like tuning and stuff like that. So. Uh, the and all those other components. It's mainly just the oil things that are changing, right? Yeah, I mean, I think they're Arrow is re redesigning the, the duct. Yeah. Uh, I think what their plan is is to try and move it closer to the the car. Um, yeah, the radiator is staying the same, like inside of it. Um, the only other design change I've thought of is. Um, uh, making the oil pan lighter um, because when the oil pan was designed um, a couple, I think it was two or three years ago um, the under tray that we had didn't go um, below the, the oil pan so um, it doesn't really need to be as thick as it is to protect it from like rocks or whatever so I, I my idea would just be to remove some material to, to make, not make it as, as thick. Um, Save some weight that way. Long yeah. Thing. It's just, yeah. yeah. So. Anything else? Questions? Input? Ideas? Mm -hmm. Nope. Bye. Nope. I'm here recording, so that's good.